Hi, um, thank you for the introduction. Today, I will be talking about the work we did in the Institute of Hydrobiology on invasion dynamics, um, understanding the invasion dynamics of resistant foreign bacteria uh, entering the river microbial communities under environmental stressors. So why is it important to understand invasion dynamics of resistant bacteria? As we all know, when we look into the antimicrobial resistance aspects of the things, when we try to study the spread of AMR, one health concept is very important that we have to look into it. And we, our work focused on the human and environment interaction to it, which is very important in many aspects. And for this interaction, the best example is rivers, because we discharge effluents from wastewater treatment plants into the rivers, and rivers are generally seen as the breeding ground for AMR. So when we discharge wastewater into rivers, we uh, introduce ARBs, antibiotic-resistant bacteria, antibiotic-resistant genes. And on a side note, we can say that um, one study showed in European wastewater treatment discharge, there are 10 resistant E. coli per ml that's discharged into the rivers. Um, this is for the treated wastewater treatment plants, but there are wastewaters that are not even treated in so, so many places. So, and it is not only the ARBs and the ARGs that's released into the river water, it is also uh, the, the abiotic pollutants that's the personal care products, metals, uh, heavy metals inclusive, pesticides and pharmaceuticals that's co-released into the river. What it does is that it introduces bacterial invasion and uh, it's also, it also uh, inserts selection pressure on the river microbiome. So our research question is that how does the microbial community resist the incoming foreign bacteria under stress induced by environmental stressors? And to study this, we used E. coli CM2372 as one of the, it is a, a special lab scarred E. coli that we don't find in the environment as a bacterial uh, invading bacteria. And we use copper as a proxy for inserting selection pressure on the river, river microbiome of two different rivers in Dresden, Germany, Hausdorferbach and Hischbach. So how we studied how we study the invasion dynamics. First we placed glass slides that was that were fastened with a holder and placed carefully in uh, and we submerged it in the river and uh, we let it there for one month so that the biofilm would grow. And after that, we took it back and we also collected river water for um, the, our flume setup. So the flume setup was in 20 degree, uh, 20 degrees Celsius climate chamber. And if you can see, this is a basic flume, a picture of a basic flume where we had exposure units placed. And um, we exposed it to E. coli and copper 500 ppb on a single pulse and this was the setup that we had three different treatments where we had one control and um one flume had e coli without copper and the other had e coli and copper at the same time and we did this for both the river microbiofilms and then we collected samples that was destructive sampling. We uh, picked uh, three slides at a time for initial day when we retrieved the exposure unit from the rivers, day zero before we started the treatment. And after one week of acclimatization, we uh, started taking samples for day one, two, seven, and 14. After that, we took the, did the analysis qPCR for 16S RNA and E. coli for the special E. coli that we used and also 16 sequencing. So when we looked into the initial diversity of Hausdorfelbach Haus and Hirschbach, we, the alpha Shannon diversity of both the rivers showed that they are different and um, also the beta diversity, the break is dissimilarity on the right side showed that they are distinctly different. Hence, we can conclude that we concluded that we have two 
river biofilms with different di diversity for the experiment. So if you look closely, there are three main steps for the invasion process that we can summarize. It, it's uh, introduction, establishment, and impact. So I will, I will go through all the steps one after another. The first step is introduction. And um, after we started the treatment, we introduced E. coli to the flume where we didn't have copper and the one that we had uh, copper. And we saw that at day one, the E. coli, a relative abundance of E. coli. Whenever I talk about E. coli, it is the, the special CM2372 strain that we look into as our invader strain. So with the initially, initial relative abundance of E. coli was um, between two rivers where there was in, in the absence of copper was not, not different. And when we looked for the one where there was copper present, it also showed no significant difference. And it was, it, hence we can conclude that E. coli successfully enters the biofilm with no significant difference between rivers or treatments. So, so the introduction process we can conclude mainly is based on stochastic dispersal processes and there are no effects of stresses on biofilm or biofilm diversity. And the second, for the second step where establish, establishment takes place, place. So we looked into the qPCR data for, for the, uh, uh, the qPCR data we did for the biofilm community and the Pearson correlation of relative abundance for the E. coli showed that for the relative abundance of E. coli in the absence of copper showed significant decline within the 14 days of the experiment for both the rivers, the river microbiofilm in the absence of copper. And when we looked into the other uh, treatment where there was copper present, we saw that it either the E. coli relative abundance of E. coli either increases or it stays more or less the same. So we saw that successful establishment if E. coli is exclusively in the presence of copper stress. We also looked into the total bacteria 16S RNA gene per, per centimeter square of the glass slide we had. And we saw that there was no significant difference in the total bacterial count, which means that the changes in the relative abundance of E. coli per total 16S RNA gene do represent changes in its absolute abundance of the E. coli. Now, when we look at the diversity loss under stress, because we were wondering what had happened, what, what caused the increase or relative stability of the E. coli population in the presence of copper, we had to look into the Shannon diversity of the microbial community. And when you look at it here, we saw that when we compare at day 14, the diversity, Shannon diversity of both the rivers between two treatments, control and absence of copper, we saw that there is no significant difference between the community. But when we look at the the treatment where there was copper present, we see a significant loss of diversity at day 14 compared to the control, which means that diversity decreases when the microbial community is exposed to stress. So the second establishment step, uh, the, the second step establishment is um, in absence of stress, we saw that E. coli cannot overcome the biological barrier by the community. But when the, the stress is present, when copper was present, successful establishment of E. coli was seen and it also coincided with the loss of community diversity, which was also the loss of barrier effect. Every invasion process has three steps and without uh, a, an invasion is not successful until they finish the three steps. And uh, so far we have seen that the E. coli establishes itself. After that, there are two possibilities that happens for the impact. Either 
there would be a successful invasion under stressful condition or the, the invasion would not succeed because it doesn't have an impact on the community. But either way, literature suggests that a successful invasion under stress con stressful conditions, resistant bacteria as become can be a permanent community member because it knocks out, it, it covers the niches that is available that was knocked out due to the stress. And uh, there is also a high possibility for horizontal gene transfer of resistant gene. And when there is unsuccessful invasion, we see that the resilience um, is like the resilience of the community. If the community is resilient enough and, um, and there is a change in community and niche structure, but it, it, it can be that the E. coli is, does not succeed to survive in the biofilm community, but then it leaves a dent in the microbial community, which would um, also uh, scar the, I mean, uh, leave the entire biofilm community distressed for the next invasion, and it would be more vulnerable to it. And also that horizontal gene transfer can be possible, but it is less probable. So in conclusion, the success rate of invasion by invading bacteria is increased in the presence of stressors. In this case, it was the E. coli that we used in copper, and it can be very alarming if the invading bacteria are resistant to antimicrobials. Hence, I think we think that we should rethink the co-release of ARBs and ARGs with all the abiotic pollutants. With this, I'd like to conclude my talk. And I would like to thank my mentor, Uli Klumper, and uh, supervisors, uh, Dr. Thomas Berendong from Germany and Dr. Gargi Singh from India and my Indian and German team, and also all the funding, fundings I got for the research.